going to believe this. I broke my car. I drove this thing 3,300 miles. That's a lot of miles and 280 miles to go to get to my house. And the fourth gear in the transmission decided it was done. So we're going to put this thing up in the air and see what we're going to do to fix it. I don't have a good game plan. All I know is I need to get this transmission out and figure out if we're going to be rebuilding it or looking for a new one. So let's get this thing up in the air. The old Mustang's hurt. We got to fix it. Come on. time this thing was in the shop it was getting all kinds of work done to it we did four link and airbag rear suspension and cobbled together a trunk floor and everything was good i mean as good as it's gonna be for a old junker that it is but Gave it a little more of a test drive than it was ready for. I disconnect the battery just because it's got a little bit of a draw. And I don't know if I'm going to be having to pull the starter out or not. Alright, let's get under here and see what we're working with. First things first. What transmission do I have? I am under the impression that this is a Borg Warner SR4 transmission, which I need to do a little bit of checking, but it should be. Um, it's got a tail shaft mounted shifter, slip yoke, all aluminum case. The top is bumped up a little bit, which I think means that this is in fact the Borg Warner SE4 or SR4. So I think what we'll do, I'm gonna pull the drive shaft out first and then I will, uh, I'm gonna try to just unbolt the transmission, leave the bell housing and clutch in place and then just pull the tranny out the back. We'll see if that works or not. Um, we have some major oil leaks going on under here that I probably should take a look at. Wow, there's some serious oil going on. It's kind of a crummy old engine, but it got the job done. All right, I'm gonna pull the drive shaft, quit talking. I skipped a step. You gotta pull the shifter out first. Unscrew the shift knob. And then I should be able to get on these the boot, get rid of your air freshener, because that just gives you a false sense of hope that your car's not going to stink, or it always does, because there's still mouse nest stuff like everywhere. I think I probably need to just get rid of this whole carpet kit. It looks nice and new, but I think it's nasty, pea-soaked, mouse-smelling grossness. Oh, come on out of there. So these three just sort of hold this retainer plate that the, the shifter pivots in. So this style should just lift right out of here. There's other styles like in Jeeps where there's, in Toyotas where there's like a spring and a ball that you have to kind of like push down and move. But this one just unbolts out of the top. All right, transmission shifter done. Let's go back underneath. All right, totally the wrong size. We're gonna get the Speedo out, then we're gonna get the drive shaft out. I'll get to you versus this. Look at all that oil just dripping off of everything. The Speedo drive is usually pretty straightforward. You take that little retainer you take that little retainer doodad off 
and then that usually comes right out. Screwdriver jammed in there. That'll help you get these started. The ratchet or the wrench that I have has kind of like big old clunky end on it. It's not wanting to go. Come on. It's gonna go. I was all worried when I did this super quick garbage sheet metal work in here that I was gonna like do all this work and it was gonna get rusty and I was gonna have to go back and clean it all up. But the engine took care of that for me. The engine made sure to pour oil all over everything so it won't rust. That's very nice of it. Get that guy out of the way. And then that can probably just kind of drop out of there. Watch this. Boom. When I got this car, the tranny mount bolts here were like, the bolts were in the holes most of the way, but there was no nuts on there. And the, uh, <clears throat> the transmission like looks like it's obviously been like rebuilt recently or taken out or something. So it's kind of a bunch of red flags on this thing when I got it that I was going to have problems and sure enough the one thing that looks like somebody messed with it recently was the thing that kind of let me down. Next up are going to be these four bolts that hold the transmission to the bell housing. I'm going to go ahead and get those coming out of there. That, that one's loose. All right, let me set the camera down and I'm going to take these two bottom bolts out and see if I can wrangle this transmission out of here. All right, how heavy is this thing? It can't be very heavy. It's an aluminum four speed. Let's see here. Come on out. Clutch assembly and we're out. Come on. There we go. Go straight to the bench with it. Kind of heavy. Not too bad though. Alright. Transmission is out. That was fun. It didn't take long. Uh, I think the next thing I want to do is pop this uh, cover off of here and we can see if there's like anything that's obviously broken inside. Cool. Success. I have never taken one of these apart before. Let's just start taking it apart and see what happens. Ten millimeter. I gotta get a different socket. Probably should learn how to work on these things. There's a freeze plug on the back of the transmission. I just knocked it out. And if you look in here, let me move the light, you can see there's a little nut. That nut should allow me to separate the shift mechanism from the shift rail. And then I think this whole tail housing will come off. Cool. Now we're cooking. This is the top cover plate. Now we should be able to pull this off. Let me see. And that just comes right off. And those are your shift forks. Cool. We're getting there. Let's 
set that aside. I'm trying to hold the camera. All right, now there's the inside of our transmission. We're looking for a fourth gear that's just like floating around in there. Not a whole lot of oil, but it looks like there's been enough. This thing was rebuilt, has new synchros. The synchros are these little gold things. And those are what help you get it um, into gear easily. You can kind of see, you'll hear about old transmissions that don't have synchros. And essentially what you're doing is when you're shifting a gear, you're moving these collars. And it has to go in intersect. And those gold synchros just help this gear this collar line up with that gear. Pretty cool. I think I just roached a bearing on the counter shaft. It's Sunday evening in the dirt head shed, and you know what that means. That means it's time to start a big project. Um, I had been kind of lagging a little bit on the uh, on the transmission in the Mustang over there. But it's kind of because I couldn't come up with parts. I couldn't come up with rebuild kits. I couldn't come up with anything. So I came up with another plan. And check this out. Found a T5 transmission. I don't know what vehicle this one came out of. It could be a 90s Thunderbird. It could be a 90s Mustang. The important thing is that it has the same spline input shaft. The distances on all the numbers are pretty close and it was only 300 bucks so i'm gonna drag this thing out of here and we'll set it up with the other four speed and then we will figure out if it's actually going to bolt in the car we're going to figure that out tonight if it bolts in the car i'm driving this thing to work tomorrow uh, the little bit of information that i found online basically made it sound like if you got the t5 that is the most close the closest to fitting in your mustang tour pinot you're still gonna have to build a custom pilot bearing. Pilot bearing is what centers the input of the transmission into the back of the crank in the car. So um, that was my main concern. We're gonna find out right now if that is in fact true or if it is um, internet folklore. Let's see. So this input shaft is pretty worn here, but I feel like the part that is not worn out, we're looking at about 60,000 seven inch. This one is the same. Dude, we're stoked. All right, that's good. I'm gonna go have dinner. I'll be back. It was chilly night. My wife made chili and it was amazing. Cornbread and sour cream and cheese and all the goodies. Uh, transmission, check this out. I checked the tag, the VIN tag, identification tag, whatever. Turns out that this thing came out of a 1987 Ford Thunderbird Super Coupe, which was a 2.3 liter turbo engine. That's also a 2.3 liter non-turbo engine. If all these other things are lining up, I think that we're going to be good to go. The one thing, I don't know where it's at. The one thing I have noticed is this uh, snout for the throwout bearing is longer on this one than on the other one. And I did pull it off at the guy's place where I bought it. And they have a different type of bearing. This one uses a tapered roller bearing where the old transmission, where is it, uses a round roller bearing. So I can't just swap nose cones on it. But we will figure out how to do all this. I'm going to take a couple of measurements here and figure out, like, if if I have this thing sticking out four and a half inches from the, uh, from the face of the transmission, if that's going to crash into my clutch disc. That's, like, the main, the only concern I really have. So I'm going to get in here and take a couple of uh, measurements and see where we're at. The amount of stick out on this um, snout is more than the other one and it will crash into the clutch disc. So what I'm gonna do is just mark this one 
and cut a little bit off of it. So we'll just go ahead and put a mark on there. We'll pull that off. I couldn't find a pipe cutter that's big enough for this, so I'm going to use the bandsaw. I've got to reach one over here. I'm going to straighten that up a little bit and we're going to put it in the car or bolt it back to the tranny. Perfect. Nice and square. Looks good to me. All right, I'm going to just hit it with a file real quick and then we'll bolt this back up to the transmission. I am super stoked on this. I cannot wait to see how it comes out. Heck yeah. I've got to cut the floor a little bit. The shifter on this new transmission comes in, comes out of the transmission about three inches farther forward. So I'm just gonna trim the floor Cut a little bigger hole and we will get this thing in the car here in a second. There we go. Yeah! Holy cow! That went in there. Yes! World class T5. Slammed into this old junkie. Mustang too. So the old mount is, I believe, going to bolt right up to this casting on the new transmission. And it actually looks like it's kind of in the right area. Now, where's that old cross member? There it is. Let's see if this thing is going to go up there. We're like right there, right there. I feel like I just need to drill these holes back another three quarters of an inch and it'll go right together. Holy cow. For the drill press. I think I forgot to hit play while I was drilling. I ran over to the drill press. You can see the extra holes. It already had the slots. I drilled the extra hole. Hopefully that allows us to get this all to lie where it needs to. I'll swing that up over there, that up there. Supporting itself in the car. This must be what the kids felt like back in the 40s when they were doing swaps and figuring out what worked with what cars. This is this hot rodding right here. All right, I'm going to do a few more things and we'll figure out if I'm going to get that drive shaft to work in here. Oh, I hadn't told you that yet. I got a drive shaft from this guy and basically my stock drive shaft, the yoke, the spline count was different. So that wasn't going to slip in. And this drive shaft was going to be an inch too short. He had a drive shaft sitting in his barn. We tested it, and the slip yoke goes into the transmission just fine. And it's about an inch and a quarter longer, which is perfect. Uh, this U joint is pretty wipe, wiped out. So I'll probably change that out. If I have to, I'll just use the one out of the old, the old shaft, because it's in good shape or I'll dig through my pile of stuff and see if I have any 1310s. Let's test fit it first. Drive shaft bolted in. Slip looking good enough. Still a little bit short on the drive shaft. Speedo is hooked back in. Tranny mounts all good. Reverse light switch is good. Return spring on the clutch. All right. Let's lower this thing down and fire it up, see if it goes forwards and backwards. All right, here we go. See if things go totally haywire. Battery's disconnected. 
Dang it, I'll be right back. Let's crank this thing up. Jeez, the rear end sounds terrible. This is rad. I kind of get the feeling like this tranny is going to be good. And I'm going to realize that I really need to, uh, I really need to put a new rear axle in this thing. All right, that's it for tonight. That was a good day. Holy cow. Five speed swap in an afternoon. That was nuts. that I had to just slam that drive shaft in without doing joints on it first but it was too late and I needed to go to bed. I can do the joints today or tonight or whatever. Third gear. Deer. Whew, that was close. It seems like it's all spin and smooth. I definitely need to get those U joints. I'll probably pick some up and lunch and swap them out tonight. start posting these videos up every Friday at 4 o'clock Pacific time. Um, also, if you guys are interested in doing any sort of like question and answer sessions, I'm down to do some more videos on that. I'm trying to back up and not crash into stuff right now. All right, you guys have a good one. I'm going to get to work and uh, I'll see you guys next week.